I don't know. I don't know. I moved been, far, it has oh, been one of those kind of days, though, Yona. Like, dead air. Dead air on Liberty Radio. Can you imagine? And twice. But I wasn't keeping track. Really? Twice? No, no one noticed. Oh, yep, so twice. it did actually, like, it went off, it came back on, went off and came back on again? That's right. Or were you talking about just No, now? no, the, the, the stream, because I've been listening on, until I just now. I've been listening, and there were two uh, spots of dead air. Um, ah, did that's why that's why it's called coitus interruptus. Well, exactly. Did any Beastie Boys come through at all? Uh, that's a negative. Damn, that's that's the real tragedy, right you know, there. You know, the sad thing is, it was the Beastie Boys that fought for our right to party. That's right, and yet it was their partying. That was denied. And that's a shame. You know, I, I tell you what, folks, I feel so bad about that. We might just save a little desert dessert. Am I saying it wrong? De- it, it was desert storm, right? Or no, dessert storm. No, it's no, desert, not, desert I'm storm. My it was dessert in the desert. desert right. mixed up again. Right. So it's, it's, a, it's a dessert offering at the very end. I actually remixed uh, intergalactic planetary by the Beastie Boys. Um, that's called the Shelly Olmstead Homestead Remix. Um, made it for a good friend of mine um, over at the AM Wake Ups. And uh, yeah, that that's one hell of an intergalactic remix. I, I got really carried away with like the 1970s symphonic strings and disco beats and everything. And I did keep the robot, you know, intergalactic planetary planetary intergalactic you know and the rap well you have to of course of course yeah. um it's what makes that the, song iconic and some and, and, and uh, somewhat annoying honestly what's really cool about that video is i found a home video that they made before they got big when they were just kids and they went and pranked their manager while he was in a hotel room in the bed and like, you know, the whole nine yards. So now that I've teased it out, I, I guess I'll, I'll share the link to that. Hopefully I uploaded it. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully, but, but hopefully if not, you did. I mean, you got two hours, if not. If not, you know, I got two hours to upload it. I'm pretty sure it. we can but get anyway, it done in that amount of time. Um, As you folks may have noticed in the thumbnail, um, the current monarch of the United Kingdom, uh, the one I affectionately refer to as uh, King Chucky the Sausage Fingered is uh, resplendently um, featured uh, there. Uh, pita, like uh, pita bread. Yeah. Well, uh, it was like it, he was in a, a pita is kind of what it looked like. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which, you know. Which makes him a royal pita. When, when, when they make the gyro. And they put the feta cheese and everything in there, and they cut off the little pieces of the gyro meat, which is mutton, you know, lamb. Yeah, right. Laham hamal, as they would say, uh, so anyway. Um, shout out to all my friends in uh, Palestine. Uh, it's anyway, the one thing so. I miss the most about Fairfax. Yeah. 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 And you know, when you go into that thing and it's in the corner and that thing's just ying, 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 just to rotate in a way and the dude's got the big Greek mustache with the fucking black Greek fisherman's cap and everything, you know that shit's going to be authentic. Yeah. See, even Briar Rose came out for that. She knows. Oh, yeah. That's that's some real shit right there. Oh, man. And I'm not even a fan of feta cheese. I was remarking that earlier today at work. I don't even like feta cheese. But... When Christophoros at the fucking donut shop where he's got his little Greek thing going on there at the end of the building. Oh, man. And he makes it all homemade, too. And he's got his little boom box over there where he's playing the fucking Greek music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all right. So uh, Dylan anyway. arrived in the Odyssey chat. And, of course, you know, when Dylan shows up, he only wants one thing. How high and am it's I disgusting. Right now? Yeah. Right now, the Yona is higher than Briar Rose on the top of Drizzle's chair. There you go. 
But there don't worry, Briar Asking Rose can get higher receive. than that. Briar Rose can actually jump to the ceiling and hang off the ceiling with nothing but claws. This is true. This is actually true. I have not witnessed it yet. Cats do but that. But given what I have witnessed, I, I believe that it is possible 100%. She just has not been presented with the opportunity quite yet. Hasn't quite figured out how to do it. One day. I that would day say, is probably I would coming probably very soon. probably already has figured it out. You just got to leave your camera on for when you go to sleep. And then check Honestly, the film in the morning. I don't and know. You'll, be ama- you'll be amazed. No. Like, based on oh what I know God. from my own waking hours. No, I'm good. I'm good. I know enough. That, that would be freaky to me. You know, you go back and you see this thing doing cartwheels and like, what the fuck? Is my cat training to be a ninja while I'm asleep? Like, what the fuck? Yes. What's with the nunchuck? That's exactly what what's happening. What the fuck? What is going on here? The little dents Thank in God the I've wall are from the throwing port. stars. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've got, I've got all of that evidence in here in the back studio. Yeah, it's all over the fucking place. It's unreal. Well, it's not a um, cat. It's a demon. It's a we, furry uh, little four-legged demon that right now wants dick twenty-four-seven. Yeah, yeah. We're we're gonna get to uh, Port and Downs and the Scripalls eventually, as well as Peter Dashak and Eco Health Alliance. Oh, he can gonna, go fuck himself. We're we're gonna circle back on that turd again. But the focus, laser focus, Yona. Laser focus. I'm not, not going to get all sidetracked like I always do, um, especially on town halls. Sorry about that, Jay Dyer. You know, I, I can't help myself. I mean, Richard fun. tried to warn you, buddy. He yeah. tried to yeah, warn he you, did. man. He did at the very beginning. That was a lot of fun, though. <laughs> yeah, for folks who don't know, uh, this week at the Grand Theft World Town Hall on Tuesday, which was two days ago, uh, today, Jay of course, being... about it. Yeah. Today, of course, being May 16th, uh, this would have been on the 14th. Jay Dyer guest hosted for three hours and, and literally took any question from anyone in attendance and uh, was an awesome sport, played along magnificently as he usually does in true comedic fashion. And it was a hell of a lot of fun for Grand Theft World members. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. I'm anxious to hear. Have you heard like anybody that that wasn't present that watched it afterwards? Have you heard from any of those folks? Were they like Yona? You fucking talk too much, you asshole. No, you know I've huh? I've never gotten any negative commentary back from any town hall. The only uh, contact I've ever received after a town hall has been for like, um, on rare occasions, because it's not like a regular recurring thing. I think yeah. maybe you get a cease and desist every now and then. Maybe two, possibly three times over the course of three years of town halls, I've actually played and performed music live. And in those rare cases, oh, that's right. You have in the very rare cases I've done, like when I played the Ralph Barrick song, yeah, about the you know the mRNA song, you know, uh, you know, gaining the function. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, you know, uh, so when I played that, I had three different people over the following week and a half or so reach out to me for like a copy of or the link. To the song um and then actually that the reason i played it on town hall is because james evan Pilato had dug it out of my band camp because i'd thrown it on band camp but it was an unreleased track it's not on any album that i'm aware of maybe no maybe it was on my second newer album which would be album 11 um radioed active and ting and ting um a- anyways available yeah. on bandcamp available on bandcamp but it's called um mrna 
Ralph We're going to get some of that damn band camp money. I promise you. I promise and, you. Uh, oh, yeah. I've made, I've made some, a little bit of money off of uh, band camp, but not like big slabs of American cheese, more like little crumbs of Parmesan. Well, yeah, but that's, not not that's like from a works. shaker, like the kind you get from a little foil pack. You don't know how old it's been in there. And you, you're like, you're looking at the ingredients and you're like, hmm, powdered cellulose. Kind of sounds like sawdust, tastes like sawdust, smells like sawdust, but it's called powdered cellulose. Hmm. Anyways, um, so Media Monarchy then plays the mRNA song on the radio because, uh, again, at the time, I wasn't even aware. And then Dead Fella in Bangladesh lets me know when I'm driving an Uber in Charleston, West Virginia, hey, Yona. Turn on the radio. Your song's on. Oh, cool. <laughs> and I, I I was shocked when I heard what song it was. Because I was like, ah, I didn't expect that. That's that's one of those songs that um, got my YouTube channel killed. <laughs> oh, That's nice. one of the only songs on Rumble. Commercials never come on at the beginning of that one. Just go straight to the song every time. <laughs> that's that's probably one of your uh videos that continues to lose views as time goes yeah. by. Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of those. I'm yeah, like, I oh, that's interesting. It right now, three it's fewer views than like it was two. yesterday. <laughs> that's great. I don't know. I guess people go back in and they what, they they move the bar all the way back to the beginning and that wipes out their view. Is that how it works? I'm trying to think how that song went again. It was like We've taken such pains, the function made gains for Dietrich on steroids. Yeah. 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 It, that is a good song. Just chocked full of facts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's what we're here for every Thursday night. Uh, but um, since it's supposed to be an Anglo American conspiracy, am I right, Carol Quigley? And the focus tonight is on the. You know, the, we're, we're taking the angle of the Anglo angle. The Anglo angle. Um, okay, sure. We're keeping, it, we're keeping it British with uh, an apostrophe there. Um, and so, uh, speaking of all this live music, um, I, I did this song. I wrote the lyrics with Dr. Kingsley Dennis there from lovely Manchester, England, up near the borderlands with uh, Scotland. Where they paint themselves blue. Am I right, Braveheart? Um, not far from Lockerbie, where that airplane uh, was blown up and crashed. And it was supposedly Libyan terrorists, because that was one of the first times um, we did an airstrike on Gaddafi. Because of the was that a Libyan plane? Uh, okay. No, it was a British Airways flight. That, that crashed at Lockerbie there by the British. Oh, that's right. It got blamed on Libya. But, that's but it right. Was, okay, it I was remember blamed. now. I remember now. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was blamed. The the baddies were Libyans, yeah. allegedly. And that's why they that had dirty little off. Arab shot down the plane. Yep, I remember. Wow. I remember now. So uh, he helped me write the lyrics for it. And then. When I sat down to uh, actually make the music for the song, um, you know, the first thing I did, I was actually making the music video for Ontological to finish our album with uh, Dead Fella and Dr. Dennis, our, our debut album, Capitalistocracy. And the track was, uh, I was making the music video for the track Ontological. Um, which is about Canterbury, which is like the oldest church in England. And that's actually um, the Archbishop of Canterbury is technically the kingmaker in England. Hmm. And so in yeah, the, he's in the, the highest ranking member of the church in England, right? Uh, of, of the uh, Anglican church. Yes. Okay. Uh, again, with the angle there. Um, Cause you know, there, there's a dangle to the angle and, cause it's got a bend in it. Right. They call them bangers, but it's actually sausage. Um, so, as I was saying, um, 
so he's the kingmaker, and in this video, I actually have uh, the moment that the Archbishop of Canterbury in the cathedral at Canterbury puts the crown on King Chucky, the sausage finger little head, and actually has quite a bit of trouble getting the crown on his head there. Um, very, very awkward moments there. Was it because it was like uh, misshapen? And well, like it didn't want to sit right? And, you know, because like he's got those big me. fucking ears. I tell you what, we'll, we'll, we'll throw this video up here in a little while. And your Keep ears continue to grow over the course of your life, just like King Chuck's. That's right. Yeah, that is weird. That, yeah. I mean, that happens. It's one of the few body that, parts that does that. Yeah. When you got Dracula blood in your veins, that happens. I suppose, um, yeah. <laughs> so we'll we'll throw that video up here in a minute, and and folks, you can tell me if it maybe I'm just seeing something, but I think the Archbishop of Canterbury, where he's straddling one of King Chucky's legs, I think he's rubbing his junk on Chucky's leg, and he's just kind of like acting like he's fumbling with the. Um, crown as long as he can because he's sitting there and he's rubbing his balls on the king's leg because he's the king maker. He can do that. He has that privilege. I guess. I don't know. I don't know how it works over there. I don't know like what their hazing rituals are for new kings or any of that shit. Because I honestly don't care. The worst thing from new kings is when they get to nuking. No, you, you, Britain you, you doesn't nuking, have nuking. nuclear weapons, you think? Definitely. I know England's got some. Definitely. Because nuclear weapons are real. I don't know. Right? Television told me it was just us and the Ruskies. Oh, I don't know. TV lies, though, so you have to be careful know. about that. Yeah, man. Because, you know, I, I've heard about all this super-duper military superiority, and then I see these fucking YouTube videos from uh, Ansar Allah, you know, put out by the Houthis and the Hodeida Yemen, and then I see the the videos put out from, like, you know, Lebanon from uh, Hezbollah. And, uh, you know, they're, they're just, like, just kicking their ass with drones, man. Just, like, remote control fucking drones. And they're just lighting their ass up. I mean, when I say, let me be specific. Like, you know, United States, that should I say Raytheon? <laughs> Raytheon and Boeing RTX. have been outfitting. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm sorry, the artist RTX. formerly known as Raytheon. Yeah, Raytheon yeah. Technologies uh, um, uh, Limited Partnership. RTX. Uh, Whatever the fuck the X stands for, yeah. Uh, same thing the X stands for in Twitter. Ask uh, Elon, Elon Musk. Um, you know, you'll, you'll hear them when they announce the prayer with the Azan there in top of the minaret um, at the Elon Musk. So they're, they're, they've they put in this system Muslim. called um, the Iron Dome Shield System. Or it's got these missile batteries of surface-to-air missiles that will, you know, attack anything that tries to get in inside right. there. They're supposed to field. intercept other missiles. Right. Which but, I've heard the process of that described as being similar to trying to hit a bullet with another bullet. Right. So Pretty not much. a high degree of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Accuracy. That uh, yes. Gonna gonna be a lot of missed shots. But the problem is the actual missile batteries for the Iron Dome system were then attacked by inexpensive drones that blew them all up. You mean like the the kind you can get at Radio Shack for a couple hundred bucks? Um well maybe some of the parts you got from Shanghai, but like Literally, they show one of these drones taken off from 
the Lebanese border and flying south into the northern part of uh, Palestine, Israel, whatever you want to call it, um, uh, near Shabbat Farms, uh, particularly not far from uh, um and the Golan Heights or Trump Heights, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, so they, they, they look in at the drone before it takes off. It's a fucking stick drone again, man. It's got like bread ties and then fucking wires and then the camera and then the little fucking package that's looked like, I don't know. So they're that building Play-Doh their own. Or they're dummies. like DIYing and then got, it. Like, it looks like some kind of mesquite type of wood or something to make the X pattern. And then they've got the fucking four uh, drone that's so propellers. Baller. I'm like, oh my God, that looks literally like a $35, $40 drone that just blew up an RTX fucking missile battery. Well, one of them. But so, you know, it took three of those stick drones to blow up, I don't know, about probably about $380,000 worth. Because it wasn't just the missiles, but all of the missile launching facilities as right. well. Because they, they hit them right on the launchers. So, I mean, anyway, with, with stick drones. Stick, stick. drones. <laughs> oh, Homemade, <God>. do-it-yourself. <laughs> Fucking, what, what do we got in the garage? <laughs> Let's build a drone. And the Houthis are doing the same thing. With the fucking, fucking stick beautiful. drones, man. That is absolutely beautiful. That uh, is obviously human ingenuity at its Iranians finest. have sent the blueprints from Tehran all over the Middle East. Uh, all right, guys. You got to find That gets sticks, me right in the feels, make man. Make an X. That really does. Some bread ties. <laughs> time together. Wire on the four little propellers. Make sure they're all pointing up. You're off and running. There you go. Wire it up to a battery source. Put your payload on there. Steer at We need, see, we need to Im- <laughs> import some of those folks. In, instead of what's been coming across the border, we need to get some of those ingenious young gentlemen into the country to oh, help turn yeah. shit around. Because they know what the fuck to do. Obviously, they're like, okay, this is our problem. Done. Got a solution. Have at it. Hey, sticks and stones may break my bones, but they win wars when they're uh, airborne. I'm just saying. Apparently but, so. Let's get some bread ties. Anyways, uh, that that's a little look into the Middle East. <laughs> now we're going to uh, do a little bit of live action here now that I'm done with that cigarette, I guess. This is a song about the uh, unfortunate time. Oh, wow. Uh, well, you see, the CIA... <laughs> They they get to work at um, different bases. I find myself England, sighing every time Spain, I say the CIA too. Don't France, worry about it. Germany, all over the place. Well, one of the places they work is at Royal Air Force Base Croton in the United Kingdom in England. Um, I don't know, about two hours west of London. Anyhow, uh, a number of times, American personnel drive off that base, spies. Yankee spies. And of course, it's their first time driving in England when they drive off that base. And so they drive on the right hand side of the road, right. which is they a no no in England because yeah. you're supposed to drive on the left side in England. That, that's what they do there. That's why the Correct. drive, that's why the steering wheel's on the right hand side of the car and not the left Correct. side. Correct. Anyway, um, like you would think they would figure it out from the fact that the steering wheel is on the other side. that you flip the other right. thing too, but no. But to be fair, Ann Sekulis was a an American. <laughs> that does explain it, actually. And you know, if she would have been at a base in Saudi Arabia, this never would have happened. She would have known better to be caught driving off base as a female. But um, unfortunately for... uh, That's right. I think you can be executed for that. uh, Yeah, publicly. Yeah. Uh, And it's with a big curved sword called a scimitar. I highly recommend the pistachio ice cream uh, and the roasted barley at the concession stand because it's like drizzled with cinnamon and sugar. Really good. 
really good. Um, it, it's like a carnival atmosphere, except every now and then you'll see like a decapitated head roll away, and then there's like blood spurting everywhere. Other than that, um, other than that, so uh, poor Harry Dunn there in um, is it Northamptonshire? Yeah, um, he was on his um, Kawasaki Ninja, little uh, 18, 19 year old kid there. Uh, 18 years old, 19, 18 or 19 at the time, and popped over the hill on um, Park End Road there. And there's Ann Sekulis, Yankee spy wife or whatever, and just plowed right over top of him and decided to turn around and get the fuck back to base really quick. And then two days later, As fled back do. to the United States. You know, because, you know, I mean, if you're in another country and you kill somebody, it's a good time to get the fuck out of that country and go back Yeah, home. go to another country. Before they, like, get all mad and, like, want to charge you with hit-and-run murder and stuff. Well, yeah, I don't know. Because once, uh, once you're across the border, <laughs> you have to factor, factor in the cost of extradition, you know. So, so it's, it, it then becomes like a, a basically like a, a marketing uh, exercise. Like, are... Are they going to be willing to spend the money to come get me? Is it that serious? So the United Kingdom actually has put in a formal extradition request for Ann Sekulis for killing motorcyclist and cute blonde-haired boy, um, Harry Dunn. Um... And at the same time, the United States has an extradition request for Julian, Julian Assange. That's right. Of uh, WikiLeaks fame. And um, it's interesting that... Looks like it might happen, too. You would have thought there would have been a quid pro quid there. Like, if, if the Americans want Julian Assange bad enough, they should have to cough up to the British and fucking Sekulis. Seems fair. I myself think Julian Assange should be freed and the Americans so, should all right, just all right, all right, send her right, back. Right. But they did have been... a court. There was a disposition in British court over the case of Harry Dunn and Sekulis was... And, I'm sorry that with that name. And Sekulis was allowed to testify. Right, it's a silly video. name. That's fine. Yeah, by we do video. lots of silly things here on Liberty Radio. And was I'm, found I'm curious guilty. though, like so. Assange right now is in where Belmarsh Prison? Is that it? His Majesty's Prison, Belmarsh. You are okay. Correct, sir. So, so he is technically a ward of the state of Britain. Then, That's at right. this point, legally, he is a subject of the king. Okay, because I'm like, wait, he was in he was in the the Ecuadorian embassy, which would tex- technically then make him a ward of the Ecuadorian state. Right. It, it was and, confusing. The chain of custody that, that. of Julian Assange was like very murky for a long time. It's like who actually had the legal right to this man at the present moment? Rafael, because again, we're all actually, property um, folks. Rafael Correa had actually granted Julian Assange full Ecuadorian citizenship. And so when Lenin Moreno took that money, the pacatazo from the uh, Fondo Monetario Internacional, the uh, International Monetary Fund, um, uh, he, he then, you, that's when you saw Julian Assange hoisted out of the Ecuadorian embassy by uh, British intelligence, MI6. And then, days later, Lennon Moreno then revoked Julian Assange's um, citizenship. Oh, well, that was nice of him. Um, after the fact. Um, so, there's that. So, I guess without further ado, um, before I hit this bowl, I, I, I can stop smoking something long enough to sing this song for Harry Dunn and... Uh, one of my favorite uh, journalists, um, prisoner A nine three seven nine A Y at His Majesty's Prison, Belmarsh. 
also known as Julian Assange. Um, anyway, sucks when they force vaccinate you and you have a stroke. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's hey, it. mistakes were made. Um, oh, yeah, I got to move this over. So this song is normally done with organ and oboe and bassoon and clarinet and like and you're gonna play all of that right all these woodwinds and everything and you know i thought for a change i've never ever played this song just on piano so why not now sure i mean we got we got time how long is it going to take you to set up like should i send people on a bathroom break or uh we're set up we're set up now. Okay. I just had to get that in tight so that it doesn't like to slowly start to swing out of place. It has to be cinched tight. Yeah. All right. And then the other problem is maybe if I take that one out. Yeah, that's going to work. Oh, wait. Can you hear me over here? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Can you hear me over there? Yep, yep. Okay. Yeah, we're good. All right. So this song is called Park End of Portway, dedicated to, what's that kid's name again? Harry Dunn and Julian Assange. All right.
Oh, fuck yeah. There you go. Yeah, fuck yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, where else can you hear live music on a Thursday night? Please tell me. I'd like to know who else is playing live music on their streams every week, week in and week out. God damn, give it up for the high Yona. Yeah, and smoke more of the weeds, obviously. Yeah, that was... Uh, just that... That song just stings of so, so much hypocrisy. Every time I hear more about Julian Assange, my mind immediately goes to the Harry Dunn case. Because, hmm. I mean, I don't know how any American in British court with a straight face can keep screaming for the head of Julian Assange while they're do they're still doing this shit with Ann Sekulis to this fucking day, man. I I'm sorry, who did Julian Assange kill? No one. Who did he run over? Who did he kill? Nobody. As far as we Meanwhile, know. Meanwhile, that bitch fucking killed somebody and literally left his fucking broke ass in the fucking, I mean, God damn, man. How do you just do it? hit and run, kill somebody on a, a, a kid on a bike and then just flee the, flee the country and just to fuck you fingers left and right to the, the entire fucking UK legal system, keep showing your ass and then send three lawyers to fucking argue against Julian Assange. I, I, Again, it boggles the fucking mind. But it's the American way. Boggles the fucking yeah. mind. Get there the fastest with the brownest nose. The complete fucking nerve of these assholes. Oh, my God. It's outrageous. Anyway, really, yeah. really gets my blood boiling. I That's can see that. That's what grinds my gears, Peter Griffin. I can anyway. see that. Hello, Quahog. Stool Van. So, uh, all right. We got, we used the, the portrait, right? The new, I guess this is the official portrait of the monarch, right? Like the one that's going to go up with all of the other monarchs throughout the history oh of God. Britain, right? We got to see that this week. And it was like, I don't know, it looked like he was just drowning in a sea of Pepto-Bismol. That that was like my first impression until I looked at it longer and then I started seeing like, you know, esoteric symbols and shit in it. There's all kinds of shit hidden in that covered up with the puke pink, uh, you know, that surrounds his his face. Like pink pepto. Was it like was he trying to appeal to all of the demographics? Like, was he going for that Barbie market, too? I, I don't understand, like, the choice in color scheme. Like, it's, it, and I mean, even, did, did you see, like, when they, when they slow the video down of him doing the unveiling? Like, you can see him kind of, he's, like, startled, like, oh, my God. Yeah, I guess maybe he doesn't want everyone to know that he's a Klaus Barbie girl. Sorry. It's just Shout bizarre. Absolutely bizarre. Now I know I know stuff is gonna happen to that painting over time, you know, the the elements oh. and all of that. And it's not gonna stay pink forever. It's probably gonna turn like a more uh, I would think like a rusty reddish brown eventually. Can can we get one of those um now I don't think it was a protester. I think it was somebody on meth, but there was someone rubbing their own feces on painting in yeah. an art museum. You, 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 yes, you're aware of that, of course. Yeah, I've um, heard about that. It's a thing. Uh, it's a thing that people do. It, it's going to happen to King Chucky. It's gonna I hope so. I hope okay, so. Okay, so here's the story on Ontological, the, the song that I jawboned about for like, I don't know, 10 solid minutes um i did upload the video um but uh -oh. asterisk. the video is part of the movie called pig to parrot 
So what I have to do now is so that's, that's, 50, that's 59 minutes, 20 seconds long. We're obviously not going to be playing this entire movie in its entirety tonight. Um, we got other shit to do, but it's there. We'll leave the link, okay? Uh, but we're just going to cut to the chase. So let me see. You know, Stop you know who it. wasn't at the unveiling, Yona? You know who wasn't there? Um, Queen Victoria? No. Deep Kate. Where's Deep Kate? She's got the stomach problem. No, she's supposed to be good by now. The, her press team said she was going to be good by, like, Easter. We're well past Easter. We're we're almost to the American holidays. Where's Deep Kate? Bro, Where are they Kate hiding Middleton. her? Kate Middleton's dead, bro. It's starting she to dead. look that way. She dead, man. It really is. Yeah. Where's she been? Nobody's seen her. Nobody's talking about her. All right, this is like the third or the fourth time my ear's been burning, and I keep getting this subliminal message. I don't know if it's viewers now or later, but everyone's asking where my fucking hat is. So, goddamn, quit with the fucking hat. Steve, I can hear you. I thought I was supposed to be the one wearing the hat this <laughs> week, and you were you were going to free ball it. Remember, I we mean, worked you know, that out in the meeting. The about it. I like the hat, and, you know, it's comfortable and everything, but I don't have to wear the hat. You know what I'm saying? I know. I still get inner monologue with or without hat. Yeah. And I do have a toboggan. I could put on the toboggan. You could. I've heard Canadians call it a toque, which is the silliest thing, one of the silliest things I've ever heard in my life. I could take a couple toques in my toque. Well, uh, well, the first I time I heard that, I had to look it up, and of course, I didn't know how to spell it. So I was like, "Fish? No, he doesn't have a fish on his head. What the hell's going on? That's the Pope." It's May the sixteenth, man. It was like eighty degrees today. I'm not putting on that fucking tube. Man. Was it really? Yeah. It was. Uh, it was. It was about eighty-five before the storms came through. Now it's about sixty-five. So. It actually did cool things off for once, which was kind of nice. It was a little well, sticky today. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at this uh, movie here at the description. And. Oh, hi, Yona Bandcamp album. All 14 tracks. Well, maybe that will tell me where this fucking song is. It might. Uh, Ontological is track number nine out of 14. So that's going to be closer to the end than the beginning. Yeah. All right. Let's just jump in. Oh, wait. Let me skip through two videos first. Or not. Anyway. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, it's already there. Well, fuck yeah. Well, no, that's the song I just played. You don't want to hear that on the video when I just played it live. Well, we just be, heard it. Yeah. That would be redundant. But I'm pretty sure Ontological comes on after that. There it is. 35 minutes, 32 seconds. Looks like. I should probably write that down, right? Bam. We're going to need that at some point. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll send this over on the dick sword. And then with the uh, 35, 31. All right. And that's for the end of the show? What's that yeah, for? Let me see. Oh, that's whenever you want to throw that up. That's uh, got the King Chucky footage. Oh, the okay. thing is, it, it's four minutes long. Four minutes and two seconds. Uh, yeah, because the other one picks up at 39, 35. So, yeah, there it is. We got it. Ontological. Dr. Dennis, the dead fella, DJ Young. Um and that guy that's playing the organ, like at the beginning of the song, the organ is actually of the Canterbury Chapel organ, the one that serenades King Chucky. Oh, wow. That's the organ he gets to hear. And that's the King's organ player right there. That's him. So it's the King's Same. organ. 
Yes, he gets to play with the King's Orchid every day. Everyone say hi to Lionel. Well, you're not seeing Lionel right now. Only I'm seeing Lionel. But soon we'll, we'll all see. You know what? I guess I, 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 I've, I've teased it out too much here. Let me know when you get is that. It, um, I've got the link. I just don't I haven't queued it up yet. But like, yeah, let it, me let me know when you get it queued what, up to what um, looks more like a sausage. The king's fingers or his organ? Actually, the organ looks like there's sausages sticking out of glory holes on the left and the right because it's got all these little things you can pull on, and then it's got the five keyboards stacked, and then then there's all the pedal action underneath. Um, I'm telling you, man, you, you you go, you have to go full Kama Sutra to play one of these. You know what I'm saying? Apparently, Every good lord. Um, but you'll you'll notice, um, Lionel. With his spectacles and his right, resplendent do here. Um, purple suit jacket. I mean, if you were playing with the King's organ every day, wouldn't you dress like an eggplant? I mean, come on. My goodness. All right, so do you actually <laughs> have this uh, queued up to the time that it's supposed to start? Because we, we've talked yeah. enough about it. I'm sure <laughs> folks are, are sick of... Uh, listening to us talk and would they would rather just okay right, just fucking show it here. you dickheads so let me go to screen share let's see if this works let's see if we can get a, a shot of lionel <laughs> i do what uh we're gonna play it we'll just can, go ahead can, and play it and you see lionel there folks that uh, did it come up there ontological uh, is is the screen? Oh, here? see, I got it pulled up on on my end. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just gonna oh. force you to go and listen to it on another channel because you know, all you right, all right, you don't have the ability to hear it. Does he stream labs? Be nice if you would get that fixed at some point. All right, let's see. How to kill all mosquitoes in oh, the area. Oh, you sons of bitches. Minutes. This simple but brilliant ah! trick. I know, <laughs> and I can't, I can't use the trick either because it was the first thing that I opened on this page, so I can't go back and come back in. Predator entering their enclosure. I'm... Oh, wait a minute. That's too far. All lifeless. Pred all right. Wait, what was it? It was 35, 31? Yep. No, oh, hold on. Right, I got to go mute. Uh, that's too far. I have found a joy that is full, and more than full. For when heart, mind, soul, and all the man are full of that joy, joy beyond measure will still remain. Hence, not all of that joy shall enter into those who rejoice, but they who rejoice shall wholly enter into that joy. Logical or illogical, the diabolical depths of ignorance taunt my flickers of light, drowned by darkness all around. For what little trivia my mind has found, where little is profound and a great many things are shallow. So hang wick and tallow, no fields fallow. Distill corn by candlelight Cause we make our own round here Am I right? That my joy may be full Meanwhile, let my mind meditate upon it Let my tongue speak of it 
let my heart love it. Let my mouth talk of it. Let my soul hunger for it. Let my flesh thirst for it. Let my whole being desire it until I enter into thy joy, O Lord. Philosophical or doxological, the glorified praise of beliefs taunt my glowing embers, my spirit burning through ice. For what little grace my soul has recognized, where it is encompassing and ubiquitous and not circuitous, the superfluous flow where we all know even King James's versions must go. Scripture is in red letters, blood cells in our veins, and the gospel in cigarette fingertips stains. Think for yourselves, even when it pains, where only your essence remains, no more ego to fight. And now, my soul, arouse and lift up all thy understanding and conceive so far as thou canst of what character and how great is that good for if individual goods are delectable conceive in earnestness how delectable is that good which contains the pleasantness of all goods and not such as we have experienced in created objects but as different as the creator from the creature for if the created life is good, how good is the creative life? When she discovered there we go. Wow. That was fantastic, Yona. Can you hear me yet? Uh yeah, I just gotta ah. Oh there we go. Turn off the audio. Ah, download. Yeah, I'm doing like Ryan Christian with the fifty five tabs here in my browser. Gotcha. Close some of these tabs, but anyway. I always try to do that the closer it gets to broadcast. I was I I just kept smoking weed and I forgot. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> it is but all uh, right. so um, that was fantastic though. That started out as uh, just a piano riff, and then like I went to Proslogium, which is the uh, ontological um argument for the existence of god that was written by uh saint anselm of canterbury um in latin and so i went to the english translation and i took a few lines from that and then <clears throat> made song lyrics where i don't know out of like a total of i think 36 lines Maybe seven or eight lines actually come from Anselm of Canterbury's Proslogion, but then the rest I wrote. Um, and I actually did the spoken word on that song. Um, uh, and I had the audio for that, but I've never actually mixed it on the song because after I did it, I immediately thought, man, this would be way, way better with Dr. Dennis doing the spoken word because that's kind of his thing for those that are familiar with dr dennis mm. that's that's his, his voice is hypnotic that that's his um mm. bailiwick as it were yeah Ooh. that point i took the lyrics sent them over to uh uh dead fella and said dude you got to send these lyrics to kingsley literally not even 30 minutes later dead fella sends me the the mix for this song and he's like it's already done 
already done. I was like, well, I thought you were going to give the lyrics to Kingsley. He's like, yeah. I sent the lyrics to Kingsley like 20 minutes ago. He sent me back the vocals 10 minutes ago, and I just finished mixing the song. I was like, all right, well, then I guess our album's done now, huh? See, and the, that's how the Yona and Dr. Dennis and Dead Fella can make a whole ass album in six fucking days. Not even a full week. <laughs> Not even a full week. Right. Not even, <laughs> like, <laughs> leaving wherever it is that you're located on the earth. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in West Virginia. He's near fucking Scotland. Dead Fella's yeah. in... Hajit land there in Bangladesh. Yep. I don't know I how just, he does uh, it. I just got done making a new track with Dead Fella that's going to go on Media Monarchy, where I featured one of my homies from the Cherokee Rest on North Carolina, Tawodi Red Hawk. And anyways, um, oh, is that the one that uh, Dead Fella dropped in the Telegram channel just a little uh, bit ago? Yeah, yeah, we just made it tonight. Oh wow. Nice. And he already and he already sent it. I was to gonna Sean. play it on Wednesday. And uh and Sean was like, fuck yeah, we're gonna if play I remember. on the twenty third. So here in basically one week, the song that we made two hours ago. <laughs> Going straight for radio. <laughs> sure. Why not? And and I That's mean, how it should we, be, right? We did collaborate it on it. He he sent me three versions. I mixed on it, went back and forth. It almost took an hour. You know, you know what I noticed though. <laughs> Your channel on Rumble, the Peasants Podcast channel, has more followers than the Liberty Radio channel. No way. Yeah. Last I looked, I was over a hundred. Yeah, like I think it said one hundred eleven. As a matter of fact, one one one. Wow. Triple ones. Wow. I, 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 there must be some more people that want to help uh, boost my uh, likes. And there you go. <laughs> I'll Whatever get that you on means. Fiber, buddy. I don't know what any of that shit means. I'll holler at you on Fiverr, homie. Anyways. <laughs> I guess this is, this is the time when we're supposed to be like cutting our teeth, right? Paying our dues. And then but eventually, you, you, you at some point, that, uh, they'll let us go to the the next tier. You did notice the for like ten years during that video. You you did pick up on the coronation footage. Yeah, of course. Old King Chucky, which um, it the next one will be King William, right? We well, I guess. Like, do, don't they have the option to, like, use whatever name they want to once they're coronated? Like, couldn't right. couldn't Charles have been like, no, I want to be James instead. I've always hated the name Charles. Like, he can do whatever he wants. It doesn't matter. But, yeah, I guess it would be King William, which, I don't know, it sounds kind of gay. Yeah. If we're being honest, you know, yeah, I mean, it doesn't doesn't have that. It's not I mean, douchey enough. My my baby brother, uh, who's actually recorded on some songs with Charles. me, he's a William, um, and the only way I could really try to cool it up with the William there on the front ended up calling him. Billos Marijuanos. Um, and even that was still kind of uncool because of the bill part at the front. You're kidding. So finally, then his nickname became Los Marijuanos. Um, but that was too many syllables that took too long to say. And that's how my brother's nickname went from Billos Marijuanos to just Los. L-O-S, Los. Um, and, you know, for, for those that actually speak Spanish, you would know that's a joke because it's not Los Marijuanos. It's actually Marijuana or La Marijuana or mm -hmm. Los Marijuanas um, mm -hmm. or Las Yerbas. But, um, yeah, or Mota. 
again, it's it's part of the joke, and that's why he's Lowe's. Um, but then his thumbnail became the Lowe's, like Lowe's department store, um, Lowe's. And so that's now brilliant. he's known as Lowe's department store, Lowe's Marijuanos, which is in aisle 15. Anyways, back to you, Chris. Thanks. Because they do landscaping the, uh, there. They've yeah. got, you know, potting soil and all that. Yeah. Well, that's the area where all the, uh, you know, all the, the folks from down south hang out. You yeah, manual you labor is like, available. Can, all right, you and you come with me, hop in the truck. Yeah. yeah. Ma- manual they labor out. is available. That's there. what I've been you, told. You can, you can hire manual told. labor there, as well as Jose and um, Andres. No, I will say I, I was rather pleased when I found out that there was a Lowe's in Jasper, but not a Home Depot. That actually made me happy. Lowe's is the shit. Shout out Lowe's. Yep. <clears throat> so, you know, Yona, it turns out, out, out of all of the crazy shit that's happened in the last seven days, right? And there's, there's been some cl- crazy shit because as we went off the air last week, ah, solar storm's going to kill us all. Right. Yeah. 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 Solar splooge just ejecting all right. of the uh, right. Galactimo. Right. And it did like funky things to the sky, but not not for your eyes to see it. It's only for your your uh, fucking slave device camera. That's the only way you can see it. You got to look that way. For those taking notes, I did say Galactimo. Which is, That's a galaxy cosmos combination. Galactimo. There you go. All right. Go ahead. Which that part of it is bizarre in and of itself. Right, that you could only see the shit with the sensors on the camera. Just couldn't really see it with the naked eye. Again, that's what people have reported. Cloudy as fuck down here when it was happening. So I don't know. I don't know what was going on. The closer up there. you are to the heart facility, the the more brilliant you could see it. Gotcha. So all of that insanity aside, turns out that the human brain doesn't really want a microchip inserted into it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would expect the brain to attack it. That's exactly what happened. Right. The the first human who was able to trial a Neuralink implant, the implant was rejected by the host organ. Yeah. Yeah. Outright. That, like, get this that was, the fuck outright of my head. That was kind of be, to be expected. Uh, I would also like to, um, I guess I'll use the word thank, Rob. Well, may, thank is kind of strong. Maybe credit. I'll, I will credit Rob for um, sharing on Telegram somewhere a link to uh twitter tweet um twixter x whatever the fuck that thing's called and elon mosque the the elon mosque where you pray toward mecca right so um and uh, anyways so i unfortunately that's why he changed the logo to black so it looked like the kaaba uh, to, to be fair rob is from new jersey so right you know, but that, i need to provide that context before i i share this you know so I go to the Twitter and it it's this person that's driving down the street and you know it looks like they're going to pull up to a gas pump to get gas and at the last second they like right as they're about to pull in they just like pull back to the left and stay on the road and then turn the camera toward the gas pump where you see a guy and you're like you can see him holding the, the the gas hose, like where you squeeze the nozzle and put the gas in your gas tank with, and that's all the way, like half the nozzle is um, up, we'll call it Lemmy Winks Lane. Yeah, um, I saw the meme and I had no idea what was going on. I was like, and then like, like I've seen people I'm getting like, oh, tattoos wait. of it. 
I, and, and I was like, like oh, oh wait, uh, the gas nozzle is on the other side because I can see the other part of the nozzle hanging down. Then I realized, no. So it was up his butt, right? That's not the other end of the gas nozzle hanging down. That's his open cock in his hand that he's masturbating while he has the gas nozzle all the way up his ass. And that's why the person recording the film pulled back onto the road to go get gas somewhere else. I would have done the same thing. When I watched it the second time, I know what you're saying. Where Why did you watch this? it a second time, Yona? Because <laughs> there were details I missed. So I'll watch it the second time. That guy's doing that to the 93 octane gas nozzle, which tells me I will never pay extra money for the 93 octane ever again. I'm checking every fucking gas nozzle for pubes now. As you should. Absolutely, as you should. You know, it's one of the reasons I gave up driving right there. Thank you very much, Internet, for not disappointing me. Thank God people have cell phone cameras everywhere. So I, I didn't miss that moment. No, the world apparently did not miss that moment. I somehow missed that moment, but it's okay. It's fine. I I didn't, it it was not uh, necessary for my survival. I'm good. I don't need to watch it. I need to splice that footage. I don't know why somebody would get that tattooed on themselves, but. Would would it be inappropriate to splice from the, um, I'm going to call them the gas pump rapist. Because that ga- the things that he did to that gas pump, the ga- how can that gas pump give consent to that guy mm-hmm. doing that thing to the gas pump's nozzle? I don't know. I think you're. It can't. Uh... It can't give consent to all of that that just happened on camera. So you know, um, I was thinking, it's gas. It's flammable. If I could like somehow add the graphics where like it he transforms into the guy that lit himself on fire at the Trump event. And yeah, then I could go to name? the other guy, what was his name? Bushnell, the Air Force guy? Yeah, he was the Air Force guy. A Bushnell. Really? Interesting. Right, they, you mean like the one that works for NASA? That's right. Never a straight answer. Um I'm sorry, need another seven astronauts. <laughs> it's a challenger question. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that would be poor taste. It's too soon. I, I think there's three. I think there's three roasters now that are, um, we'll call them prost testers. Prost, prost testers? Roast testers. There's there's a joke in there somewhere. I know there is. Roast testers. I can I can almost taste it. Almost. It's not it's quite like there. That, I don't know like what that, it is. Uh, album cover. Did they on, have brosters? Um, yeah. That's what I thought. It was like KFC product or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah broster yeah. when you when you put it on right. the spit, it's like rotisserie style. Well, there you go. Like they could they could do like a whole branding thing if they just knew this shit's gonna happen right ahead of time. You know, me. get the the marketing team out there and, and get some like banners and shit set up. You know, they're missing an opportunity. It's all about getting your brand in people's heads, you know, so that they're thinking about it all the time, whether they they realize it or not. Now we have covered the whole. Um, joint logistics over the shore, the J lots, uh, Presto Barge, and all of the uh, U.S. military presence in the Gaza Strip, right? Oh, I thought you were going to say Galveston. Yeah, go ahead. Same thing, Galveston, Gaza. I mean, they're essentially the same thing. Well, maybe except for the, all of the carnage. Um, well, now, the, and you know, it depends on what day you're talking about in Galveston. I mean, what was it? Galveston 1906 hurricane when, um, what was it, like 5,000 were killed in like a couple hours? Now, at that, at that one moment yeah. in time, 
That was a bad one. Galveston was right up there with Gotham. For the on that on that one day. On that one day, you could make the comparison. Maybe. 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 If the hurricane I, was like um well, that an would, ethno-supremacist genocidal story. Wouldn't you then have to, like, wouldn't the hurricane have to be, like, eight months long in order for it to be, like, a, a fair equivalency? Yeah, the, it, you can only compare it to one day of fighting, really. Yeah, so it's, it's not really, it's not a fair. Ooh, ooh, which one? Because there was a Category 4 in 1900 and then another Category 4 in 1915. Yeah, I was talking about the 1915 one. Aha. Wasn't that like over 3,000? You got that toll? Yeah, it's been fucked uh, about up. About 400. Oh. 403 to 405 is what oh, Wikipedia man. is saying. Yeah, wow, you know, they fuck with numbers. Yeah, those are probably Hamas figures. I don't believe them. <laughs> right. What are what are the IDF numbers? <laughs> what do they got? Hey, IDF. We know how many Galvestonians died in 1900 on the Gulf? <laughs> My dad Every... was actually uh, a funny story. You know, at, at, what was it? Richard said, I'm the Forrest Gump. <laughs> of Grand Theft World. It's like I'm connected to all these historical events. So my right. dad my dad was uh stranded on Galveston during Hurricane Carla. I believe that was in nineteen sixty two. Hurricane Carla. I don't know, maybe I should look it up. I'll look it up. Uh Hurricane Carla and so he had his ham radio set up out there with him, his ham radio handle, W5MMB. Um, 1961. So it was 61. Okay. I was off by a year. Yeah. That was pretty damn close. Uh, so anyways, he was the only communication to and from Galveston and mainland Texas for like three days. Ooh. The most intense tropical cyclone landfall in Texas in the 20th century. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it it knocked out all the power, knocked out everything. And so he had his uh, three meter whip ham radio set up. And so he was able to send messages back and forth. And then finally, um, he got out of there on a uh, duck boat, one of the Navy duck boats, the kind that can like drive and then they drive down in the water and then drive right back up on the road. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Those were all, uh, well, not all of them, but the Volkswagen thing. That was an amphibious vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they used to give like tours on those duck boats, like Puget Sound, Seattle, um, Lake of the Ozarks up there, and, you know, Branson, Missouri. And then um, turns out those things are death traps and they sink and kill people and uh i don't think there's too many duck boat tours oh wow <laughs> man carla went into the gulf and just like <laughs> it's like texas fuck you headed straight for it Damn. right for galveston and then just punched it right in the fucking mouth yeah it was cat five wasn't it oh uh... I think it said Category 4. Oh. Maybe not. I don't know. Let me see. I think it was a Cat 5. I don't know. Oh, no, yeah. It did get to Category 5. I was thinking it was a Cat 5. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and it made landfall on September 11th. Yep. That's right. Now, I don't, I don't think that was... Uh, scheduled ladies and gentlemen in 1961 the way they can do it today you know just my dad cook my up dad a category did not five make hurricane over the course of about eight hours he did not make it back to pasadena and deer park until the 15th so yeah he was he was stuck in fucking galveston for four days with nothing but a ham radio set up 
and lots of peel tab beers and canned spaghetti. Well, I mean, uh, you do what you got to do, right? At, at the time, my dad's family lived there in Pasadena, Texas, there, which is between Houston and Deer Park and Galveston. It's all along the Houston Ship Channel there. That's why my mom, my dad went to uh, University of Houston, and um, that's where he got his bachelor's degree. And uh, my mom got her bachelor's from University of Dallas up in Texas, Catholic University. And then she got her master's in Houston at the um, Rice University. Go Owls. And then dad got his scholarship. Um, academic scholarship to get his um, graduate degree in electrical and computer engineering from uh, Stanford University in California. And that's when oh, wow. my family moved out to California there. That's where my sister Julie was born. And then <laughs> they both got cushy jobs in Nova. So the family then moved from California to uh, middle of fucking nowhere in this beautiful little farm we had this apartment like was just surrounded by farms in the middle of nowhere called tyson corner you know and it's just like cattle dairy farm and everywhere and whenever i go back to where my you it's know my, now it's now home to the corporation that is running the uh digital control grid yeah yeah it, it, it's wild you know when i go back to my home place now they're off of uh US 50 Old Lee Highway right there in uh, between Vienna and Falls Church, Virginia. There. Yeah. And cut down Old Lee Highway and then bust over to Hilltop Lane and cross the little creek there, Accomack Branch or whatever it is. And boom. Now it's just nothing but like four and five story apartment blocks. There's like two blocks from where our, 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 which our apartment building is still there. It's the smallest building on the street because it's only a three-story mm. apartment building. And uh, ours was the one right there on the corner when you pull in on the left side. And now, like, two blocks down the street, down Hilltop, there's a fucking stop on the orange line for the uh, Washington Metro. And it's just like sky, again, you know, you got I-66 right there, and skyscrapers everywhere. And, from there all the way to Tyson Corner, all the like cattle pasture and the dairy barn and the yeah, it's all city now. And like Tyson Corner, the whole yeah, thing is all just, just one big one shopping big center slab of and, asphalt and concrete. Um, with a, like, like a tree it. poking up through the concrete here. I mean, there. it's like literally city all the way to fucking Leesburg now. It's crazy. Yeah, on both sides, all the way going up the the yeah. Dulles. Anyways, but it's the same way if you're following fifty. Yeah, like it's it's shit all the way out to Manassas, and I'm sure it's it's starting to creep a little bit beyond that at this point. Nowhere creeps faster than Dallas, where I've been back and forth to Dallas, Texas, starting in. 1985 was the first time I went to Dallas. Damn. So I've been going back and forth to Dallas for 30 years. Now, granted, the last time... I'm sorry to hear that, man. I really am. The last time I was in Dallas, though, was 2007. Right before so the from, crash. So from 1985 to 2007, over a 22-year period of time, I went to Dallas probably over 30 times. Up and down, up and down, driving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and honestly, the longest part of the trip always seemed like getting from Dallas to Texarkana. Hmm. Because, you know, like, whether you're going back to Virginia or coming down from Virginia, when you're going to Dallas and you hit the Texas state line, 
most, you know, virtually every state you drive through. You hit the state line three or four hours later, boom, you're in another state. Right. You look at the map, you see Texas. You see, oh, oh, Dallas is not that far from Texarkana. <laughs> you're looking at the map of Texas. <laughs> Cross the fucking state line. Of Texas. It's three and a half, four. If you're going to Fort Worth, it's four fucking hours. Yep. Four hours from Texarkana, man. Or if you're cutting down through uh, Nakidochis, down mm -hmm. to, to fucking Houston on the five nines, boom, man. Again, four fucking hours to Harris County lines, man. Man. Yeah. <laughs> But it's still, uh, God if, forbid if you're, you're going to El Paso, that that's like seven fucking hours to El Paso. Oh, fuck yeah, it is. <laughs> but like even, even Jasper is, uh, like two, almost three hours from Texarkana. If you're God, heading due yeah. south. God. Texas is fucking huge. But yeah, so that's, fucking that's massive. I was always like, cause like when I would go back. The drive from Dallas, as soon as I would hit Texarkana in the Arkansas state line, I'm like, well, shit, we'll be crossing the Mississippi and into fucking Tennessee in like four more hours. And at that point, we're already halfway home. God damn. Kind of. Not quite, but yeah. It's I, big. I have talked about the Texas front of droves before. Yes, you have. I don't know that we necessarily need to revisit the subject. Yeah, and I've talked about the Texas toll roads, too, right? Pretty sure. That yeah. might have been before we had the clip maker. All and hail of course, the you know, clip maker. And I've also mentioned the renaming of all the bases, so it's not Fort also Hood. Also the promo maker. Yeah, it, it's not Fort Hood anymore. It's Fort Carrizo. Or something like that. I, I don't even remember. Doesn't matter. Fort none Bragg. Of, none is, of it matters. Fort Liberty. Fort Benning is. I had look, <laughs> look. So uh, Nelson, maybe I don't, know. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't done the research to prove it, right? But I'm from Virginia, all right? And I'm from the part of Virginia that Robert E. Lee was from. All right, and my mother's family, her maiden name was Lee, L-E-E. -E. I had an uncle, Uncle Bobby. Uncle Bobby's name is Robert E. Lee. I think his middle name is Edward or something. I'm not quite sure. I was never close with that side of the family. So as far as I know, uh, I'm related to Robert E. Lee. And back when they started doing all of that shit where they're renaming this and renaming that in the name of woke, I was confronted with the whole, how am I going to feel about that given my potential lineage, right? Wow. And, and what I know, decided was, I don't give a fuck. It doesn't if, make a difference. It really doesn't. If you're doesn't. related to Robert E. Lee by blood and Lee Camp, is Robert E. Lee's great great grandson by blood? There's a possibility. That means that technically, Eleanor Goldfield is your cousin in law, Drizzle. I don't know who that is. That's Lee Camp's old lady. Okay. You know, the one with the eyes? I, I don't watch Lee Camp. Oh. I would say that's too bad, but that would be sarcastic. Right. You know, you don't you don't want to lay on the facetious the whole time. Not the whole time. You got to take your foot off the gas every now and then. But no, I think it's There's silly. I think it's silly that that people get offended by, you know, uh, something being named after somebody that they don't like. Right. I, I think I think this is my one and only chance during all of the Get Back Harder episodes. What are we up to now? Twenty six. Twenty six. To find out more, fuck around. Um, I, I think it's time for some racism flags. Hopefully, that doesn't get banned from TikTok too. Fuckers. Right. So let's see here. Do you know that they gave us a strike? 
for one of our clips from last week's show. Oh, no. Gave us a strike. It was the shortest one that got uploaded to the, the TikTok channel, right? And it, was, it made absolutely no sense, but I thought it was funny, right? And they said it violated their community guidelines according to alcohol, tobacco, and firearms uh, rules and regulations. And I was like, what? Oh, wow. Yeah. And it was so, the one uh, where you were saying lizard people are real. I'm like, what the, what are they even talking about? What is going on here? But lizard people are real. Right. I've seen Kermit the Frog. He well, that's what I told them. He dances and everything. Yeah, but that's what I told him. I was like, look, there's other videos on your platform talking about lizard people all day long. I can do a search for lizard, lizard people and find that shit all day long. And they were like, yeah, you're right. So um, here is the flag of the Cherokee Nation. Uh, seal of the Cherokee Nation. Uh, note that the Cherokee writing over here. Ayeli Shalagi, Cherokee Nation. Uh, and then uh, it, it's time for that racism moment, I guess. But uh, uh, to, to appease those, we have the victors of the war on top and uh, the, the losers on the bottom there. There you go. That, there's your racism moment. With the flags unfurled. Yep. Doesn't and that matter. one's for Richmond. There you go. Does not so, matter. Um, you know, I actually, Then again, uh, I, I was the kid that refused to stand and do the whole Pledge of Allegiance ritual in school. So I probably th- see things a little bit different from most people. I was inspired, you know, by the song... Um, by Guns N' Roses, Civil War, on the double album, Use Your Illusion. Uh, And you know, it's got that cool sample that he took from the uh, motion picture Cool Hand Luke at the beginning. You know, what we've got here is failure to communicate. There's just some man you can't reach, so you get what we got here today. He wants it, he gets it. And so, um, and then it goes into the slash guitar and Civil War song. Um, and I'd always, for the longest time, I don't know, 10, 15 years, had thought, one of these days, I need to make a Civil War song about the fucking Battle of Perryville. Because, I mean, at the Battle of Perryville, that's when the Civil War pretty much was decided. Cause, because... Uh, Don Carlos Beale got held up at that battle there in the Chaplin Hills. He never hooked up with Kirby Smith, who had just won his battle over in Richmond and was marching on Lexington, Kentucky. From Richmond, Kentucky, right up through uh, Boonesboro. (laughs) And um, because the columns never met, they both fizzled out, at which point the Union then chased them all the way back through Mississippi down to Georgia. And then you end yeah, up with back to Sherman Atlanta. and Atlanta and Sherman's March to the sea down to Savannah and then up through the Carolinas and all the way to the siege of Petersburg. And then they ended up at a courthouse in Appomattox and surrendered. So, um, that's right. The battle of Perryville is where according to the history, that's ahead. what happened. Um, that was in, 18 September 1863 I think um and so it was a Pyrrhic victory right yeah Pyrrhic victory in that although the Confederates won the Battle of Richmond and they won the Battle of Perryville in numbers it slowed both columns down enough and kept them separated from one another to where they were both then defeated separately. Had those two Confederate columns converged and made it to Cincinnati, they probably still would have lost. I mean, who's kidding who? I mean, 
what we're leaving out is the fact that the Union soldiers were being transported on train cars. Yep. And they had, like, uniforms, and they all had rifles with bullets, and uh, they had these things on their feet called, like, shoes. Um, and, you know, whereas <laughs> the Confederate... Yeah, front, and they had those heavy wool uniforms. I, I mean, Kirby, Kirby Smith, who's leading this brigade out of East Tennessee... Those things it, were fucking brutal. It, his... his um, his unit's called the Orphans Brigade because most of them are kids and they're all barefoot. <clears throat> Over half of them are fighting with just swords because they don't even have rifles. Um, and it was the same in Perryville. Uh, well, not not so much so. Perryville with Don Carlos Buell, he had uh, some cavalry units um, and he had Morgan with him for a while and Morgan's Raiders, but... Uh, they ended up uh, breaking column <coughs> and headed on up to Indiana for a raid. When, uh, anyways, but, but before the uh, Buell ran into uh, the Perryville Battlefield. But, but anyways, uh, that that song I wrote was called Waterhole because the reason why the Battle of Perryville happened it was uh, again early September end of the summer and it had been a hot dry drought of a summer in central kentucky and so all the creeks were dry virtually all the rivers were dry and you've got these armies with men and horses lots of horses because it was the horses and the mule teams that were pulling artillery and ammunition and supply you know their 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 supply train their wagon train and so the nearest hole of water uh, for like 50 miles was in Perryville at the source of the Chaplin River there where Doctor's Fork hits the Chaplin Fork. Um, you know, it's limestone springs and it's a deep blue hole of water there. And so all the armies were converging and they met at that water hole. And then they fought for... Uh, about six hours, and in six hours, there was over 3,000 dead and then another 5,000 wounded. Damn. And They were getting after it. You got about area of about maybe 500 acres with 8,000 people, and then for the following week and a half, two weeks, there were stragglers from the battle, both Union and Confederate, it straggled around because, I mean, there's no medical facilities sufficient to treat 8,000 or you know, all the dead. Anyway, so every barn, every stable, every outhouse. Let alone clean up the battlefield afterwards. Uh, Jesus. Every, anything with a roof turned into a Civil War hospital where they were amputating and Oh, yeah. Doing this, that, and the other, and and so the the road regiments from would go and like take over farms, like from Perryville yeah. all the way to Lebanon, um, is just like littered with um, crosses beside the road. And what's weird about it is that like normally when you see crosses by the road, you go over there and like, oh, somebody died here after the senior prom and right. you know 1985 or something but on the stretch of us 68 chain Tog cropper trail from Perryville down to lebanon a bunch of these crosses you go over and it's like oh it's like a military cross for the unit it's like well that's a confederate unit what the fuck and you know is, is this guy dropped dead on the road right here and this guy dropped dead on the road right here in 1863 um and, you know, and so, I mean, it's just stat, you know, I, I've done so much land surveying around that area, around Mitchellsburg and Parksville and Perryville, and getting into Bowl County and all that. And so, you know, I, I just always, thought, I, I just couldn't even hardly imagine um, all of that going on. And then the weirdest thing of all, just south of Perryville, there at Parksville, during the Civil War, Okay, they the Louisville and Nashville Railroad had already built tracks to Lebanon. And they were extending the tracks toward Perryville. 
uh, which would end up becoming the Louisville and Knoxville Railroad, which connected to the Chattanooga Railroad, Chattanooga Choo Choo. And so during the Civil War, from 1862 and all the way up into 1866, the Union Army supplied slave labor to the mm-hmm. LNN Railroad to continue the construction of this railroad. Um, and it was actually completed, I think, in 1867, all the way to Sinks, where it joined the Knoxville Main Line. So they did finish it. But um, the Union Army had black slaves. And white slaves. Yeah. So there were Irish and but African workers that's that right. built that railroad during the Civil War for the Union Army. It's just like devils, um, the but devil's But that's the hole. main point, is while the Civil War was going on, and even to uh, a lesser extent for a little bit after, there were slaves in northern states, in the District of Columbia even. There was still slavery in Kentucky. The prohibition of slavery was for only, only for states that had seceded from the Union. Right. It did not apply to states that had not seceded from the Union. <laughs> but uh, interestingly enough... Just over another in this country's long history of double standards. Just south of Natchez. I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> well, it would be between Vicksburg and Natchez, Mississippi, along the Mississippi River, is a spot along the river called Devil's Hole. And it's called Devil's Hole because it's like... Oh, I've heard about her. It, it's an old bend. It's an old horseshoe bend of the river where the river like cut through the middle and so it like abandoned and left this little like U-shaped, horseshoe-shaped lake of an old bend of the river over there. And it's got this huge 350, 400 foot tall vertical limestone bluff all along that far side of the river bend where it's making the horseshoe shape, like a like a capital letter U. Um, and it's got a nice beach area and everything, um, but it's got these bluffs on three sides. And so it's called Devil's Hole. Well, as the Union Army was marching south, chasing Don Carlos Buell and Nathan Bedford Forrest and these other um, Confederate generals, General Hardy and others, down through Shiloh, down through Mississippi, as the Union Army went through plantation after plantation, the black slaves are like, fuck yeah, we're free. And they all formed a huge train of people following and behind the Union Army. And this got to be a problem for the Union Army because they wanted food. Right. And they wanted succor. I mean, like they had people that were sick that needed medicine. And, and uh, you know, turns out not all of the Union um, officer corps was really struck with that, um, what, will, what will we call it, um, abolitionist fever. Um, in fact, well, a lot of them were. They didn't even give a shit. Just as racist, in fact. Um, you know, what? But, no. It, this food Where is for my, my horses oh, and my soldiers, not for the Negroes. Um, and so they, they, they were like, you know what? Yo, no, are you saying Abraham Lincoln soul. was a racist? Oh, very much so. And a pedophile. And gay. Um, that, that just well, a Have you diagram. seen his wife? Come on, man. Yeah. You could call her a wife, right, Big Mike? Anyways, um, Mary Todd. Yeah, she yeah. taught him a lot. Um, so uh, with that first column, and they dumped him off at the devil's hole, then when they met up with the other union columns at New Orleans, they're like, hey, well, we had a train of three miles worth of Negroes stretching behind our soldiers. We dumped them over at devil's hole, set them up a camp down there, Got a bluff on three sides. They motherfuckers can't climb out. They're trapped down there. 
Oh, great. Hell, we got two miles of Negroes following our soldiers. We'll take them over there. So it ends up turning into like a South Park episode. You know, like, you remember on South Park where they, like, got all the homeless to go to California and Cartman's there with the megaphone? California, they love the homeless. And so they kind of do that to the Negroes that are, you know, emancipated. And they lead them all over to Devil's Hole. And then over the course of, like, 18 months, I think close to, what was it, 10 or 12,000 freed slaves died at the Devil's Hole Union camp for freedmen. Damn. I've never heard about that story either. But well, that's why no, we call this show... it doesn't sound show, like one they would tell in school. Get Back Harder. That's why it's called Get Back Harder. Fact check the Yoda on the Devil's Hole in Mississippi. All those freed slaves that the Union Army killed. Look, I'm all for the ending of slavery. But slavery is still legal. Read the 13th Amendment. Yes. Yes, the Civil War was fought to keep slavery legal. And at the end of the Civil War, they passed the 13th Amendment and kept slavery legal. So did the Confederacy really lose? I think state sovereignty lost and at the end of the Civil War, we basically get a declaration of federal supremacy over everything forever. No more states' rights. No more state sovereignty. Just one super powerful federal government. Isn't that what we have? It's what we got now. Sure feels like it. I mean, the- we we're told that there's such a thing as states rights but i haven't seen any evidence of it you know well, all i see is is the government lean on the states whenever it needs to and get exactly what it wants i mean i would say that i could see texas that you know there is a texas secession party in the state there is a very well uh, and long-standing Texas secession movement. But at this point, if Texas left the United States, it's not like they would become an independent country. They would just become a settlement of Israel. <laughs> have you seen what the fucking... Anyway, I'm not even going to get started. I have. I have, actually. Oh. And... uh I don't know if most Texans know about the pledge See, that their it, governor signed halfway across the world a couple of years ago. He was attorney general and went after my sister for a debt when he Abbott? was attorney general. Yes. The game? Greg, 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 Greg Abbott was Texas attorney general. Uh, well, that makes sense then. He's been a scumfuck from the beginning, obviously. He, he, he was a prosecutor and then a bill collector. I'm sorry, then, what did you say? He was a prostitute? A, uh, yeah, a prostitute. That's what got him in that uh, chair? Bill Clark, yeah. cause, you know, he's a banker. He's Let a finance guy. that be a lesson guy. to the children. Uh, with the banking and the finance, and then he's like all pro-Zionist. It makes perfect sense. I mean, if you've you got a bunch of banker friends, some of them may actually pray to synagogue. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. <laughs> but no, you know what blew my mind last night, Yona? I don't know if you caught it during the Mystery Babylon broadcast. Like, my mind literally blown by what Bill Cooper said. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, man. When he said that, that, uh, what was it? Typhon is actually Christianity mm-hmm. in the story of, of you know, the, the creation story of uh, Osiris and Isis and all of that. Mm-hmm. Everything that he's been laying out so far. And most of the story of Jesus slash Mithra slash Horus slash, slash Zoroaster. Zoroaster. <laughs> It's all the same. It's all the fucking same. 
called plagiarism, right, Joe Biden? Uh, I mean, <laughs> but like if you're if you're looking at it in the terms of the archetypes that are being represented in the story, right? You're, if you're looking at it from that standpoint, Typhon, as the adversary, is responsible for the darkness in the world, yeah. not the light, which then goes right into the whole, you know, the whole thing of inversion with the black magicians. Black Hole Sun, once again, shout out Saturn. Yeah. And at that point, I was just like, well, of course, yes, that sounds exactly right. So. And now it makes sense. Are you familiar? Have you, you know, Gerald Horn, one of my favorite historians, he was at Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge. He's now at College Station over there at the... um, Texas Agricultural and Mechanical University. Shout yes. out. Go Aggies. Aggies. Fucking Aggie shitheads. Anyways, um, oh, my dad was always good for Aggie shithead shows. Because yeah. my dad, you know. Well, there's his, a lot of fresh- Wacos in Waco. So His freshman year of college, my dad actually went to UT Austin and just partied his ass off and flunked out from UT Austin. And that's how he ended up. Um, graduating as a cougar at uh, Houston University. Anyways, um, lots of Texas roots, Fiona. Um, I did send over the uh, intergalactic groovage link if we decide to scroll that up. But I'm, I'm thinking might do something else. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We should go out with that. No, no, no. We should do that. That's the one we go out on. Uh, yeah, that because the Beastie Boys got fucked by yeah. the uh, power out. That's right. That's right. Fucking NSA uh, tripped the the breaker and caused you guys to not be able to hear the Beastie Boys, and we feel terrible about that. So even though it wasn't is- our fault, uh, we're gonna make it up to you at the end of the show. I wonder. Yeah, I, I. I definitely, definitely uploaded that song because I knew it wasn't on here. And so I uploaded it to Facebook. But I'm on Rumble. Why? Why are you putting anything on Facebook at this point? It was a long time ago. I, well, I, I was Actually, I put it on there to share it with my grandma. <laughs> Yeah, grandma's still on Facebook. Grandma. I know. It, Facebook is for the older people. That's, <laughs> that's who it was built for. <laughs> there it is. I found it. I mean, think Water about hole. that. Think about using Facebook 10 years ago and not knowing that it wasn't built for you. All right. So, yeah. So, this video that I posted on Rumble of Waterhole for the thumbnail. I have a picture that I took of the actual um, hemp parade flag that was handmade by a Petersburg housewife in 1865 that they then waved at the parade when the Union troops marched through Petersburg for their Victory Day parade. And so they made homemade Confederate flags and waved them. And the Union soldiers then took their swords and cut them up and massacred the civilians in the middle of Petersburg. And they used the parade flags to wrap their wounds. And so it's literally a blood-soaked flag that was used as a tourniquet on somebody's arm. Um, And now it's at the Smithsonian Institute because my family gave it to them. Um, Let me send the link. Anyways. Damn it. Why would you you give anything to the Smithsonian? I'm sorry. Go ahead. That was my mom's idea. Um, there's the link on Big Sword. So uh, when I uh, I know what it was, I joined the Ohio and West Virginia EDM DJ and basically like a a group for dance in Ohio EDM or something. 
that's what it was. Been based out of Columbus on Facebook. So right. I'm doing this thing and I'm sharing some of my tracks and everything. And they finally, you know, after three days let me in, and then immediately I start getting attacked. And the chats are like, oh, my God, this guy is super duper fucking racist. And I'm like, where's that coming from? He's like, oh, my God, I just went to his channel on Rumble. Peasants podcast. Yeah. He's got a fucking racism flag on there. Oh, no. What? Racism flag? And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, that's the, that's the blood soaked flag my fucking dad found in petersburg Virginia. what the fuck are you talking about that's a historical fuck that's racism that's racism's right there and and so i was kicked out of the group wow yona the racist chair wow for displaying a historic artifact that's that's what our world has come to ladies and gentlemen <laughs> history is racist <laughs> So it was in at, at the St. Joseph's Parish, which is the Catholic Church in the middle of Petersburg. Um, you have the rectory house, which is where the the priest who runs the parish lives. Right? That if you're if you're non-Catholic, they would call that the parsonage house. Anyways, the rectory. Well, in 1958, I think it was the 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 old stable house next to the rectory was being demolished because you know by that point most people were using cars and not horses anymore so there was no need for this old stable and carriage house right you know basically like a civil war garage of sorts right. so all the stuff to go with your horse and buggy and all that it had like a living quarters up above the stable house for the you know the keepers of the horses um I'm not making it obvious enough, am I? That's where the Negroes would sleep. There, there was a slave. Well, I guess they were free at that point. Okay, it, yes, there, there's basically living, there's black people that live up there, or maybe Irish. No, they were black. It's Petersburg. The black people that slept yeah. on wooden beds up above the horses, and their job was to take care of the horses. And then when it was time for the priest to be, go make his rounds, Julius, the Negro, would come fetch him, and he would be the driver, and he would crack the whip and drive the buggy around, and he would get the horses to G and Haw. Um, G is to the left, Haw is to the right. So, anyways, um, they're going to tear it down, and my Yeehaw. dad, like uh, a senior at Saint Joseph's Catholic High School in Petersburg, and they're going to tear it down. That and they managed to get a ladder. So they could climb up onto the second floor and hidden behind the lathing and horsehair and plaster of the walls in the hollow of the walls they found three things an old patent medicine bottle a joint um that flag and there was one other thing that was even cooler apparently two joints um Oh, Confederate pistol. Okay. All right. So, out of the three guys that went up on That's the ladder, pretty baller. my dad being one of them, one guy wanted the patent medicine bottle, and he got the glass bottle and it still had medicine in it. Oh, shit. Um, I wonder like if it, a, like it had to be past the expiration date, right? From like the 1850s or something. Damn. Um, and my dad Some and the other guy vintage right there wanted the pistol. Nobody wanted the flag because at the time the flag just looked like a rag because it was tied up as a tourniquet. That's why when you when you folded it and laid it flat, it's got like matching blood stains on it because it was wrapped around somebody's, you know. Nice wound where they were hit with a union sword because we they were scrape waving that and like clone this son of a bitch and bring <laughs> him back and be like, what was it like? So, uh, anyways, uh, I don't know if they flipped a coin or what. I'm... He 
he lost the the coin flip or whatever. And so he, he got, got the flag. Rag, which yeah. at the time he just thought it was a rag. And it wasn't until he got home that he finally got the knots out of it and laid it flat and realized, oh, it's cool. It's a flag with like he, he said he thought at first it was an oil stain. But no, it's it's blood. That it's just because it was used as a bandage. So how long how long is this uh, Beastie Boys remix? Four minutes. Four minutes. Oh oh oh! I don't know about the Beastie Boys remix. I probably should have checked. Huh? Huh? Well, we got uh, less than five minutes left, so I think we should probably play it. I think it's four minutes and twenty seconds. Yeah. Oh, so that's good. perfect then. All right. Well, it's totally getting the guy down. Stock safety. Oh, he yeah. I'll get us there. Hold on. Smoke more of the weeds. Oh, damn it. Fuck around. It's got the damn ads again. We got to figure out a way around that. Uh, how to yeah. kill all mosquitoes just, in the yeah. eggs in just minutes. Unacceptable. I can't the Absolutely you unacceptable. I can't do it. One of the first in Beastie Boys prank home movies. Uh, here we That's have no the key. Me which we've just gotten from the front desk. This key goes to a reporter's room who's here writing a story on us. Thank God I at least have one beat before. This will Frank get us time. in trouble with YouTube, I bet. <laughs> Now when I run the beat 